30 years ago today, Steve Jobs unveiled the original Macintosh, a computer which kick-started the personal computing revolution. We're here at the store of the Science Museum to take a look at one of those models. Launched by Jobs at the Flint Center in California, the original Mac cost $2,495, which sounds like a lot of money by today's prices, but at the time was just a fraction of what similar systems cost, opening computing up to the masses. Radically different to what we think of as a computer today, Rachel Boone from the Science Museum tells us just what users of the original Mac could expect for their $2,500. As you can see, it's much smaller than what you're probably used to at work or at home. But this, in fact, was a really important computer. As you said, launched 30 years today. It had a number of really innovative uh, design features as well as software features. So if it was switched on, you can imagine it. This nine inch screen here would have been black and white. In fact, it was very surprising to have a mouse and a keyboard with your monitor. So it would have had 128 kilobytes of RAM, which is a fraction compared to what you have on your phone today. And it also came with preloaded software. Indeed, it wasn't the hardware which was the most revolutionary aspect of Apple's new computer. It was the software which heralded a new way to interact with computers. So before the Apple Macintosh was released, um, you actually used a computer by um, typing in text. So you wouldn't have had a mouse. Um, that was called a textual user interface. Now, the Apple Macintosh revolutionised that by introducing a graphical user interface or a GUI. So rather than just typing in commands, you'd actually physically click on icons which opened up. The graphical user interface quickly became the standard for personal computing, with Microsoft's Windows following Apple's lead and changing the face of computing forever. Today, mobile software like iOS and Android continue to use similar interfaces. The Mac, when it launched, didn't just change the way you and me use computers, it also changed multiple industries. The legacy of the Mac, 30 years on, uh, it's all about disruption. Uh, when Apple launched the Mac, it disrupted so many industries. It disrupted the design industry, the production industries, uh, and many, many other industries as well. Uh, a lot of the ones that I've been involved in and it's been a good disruption. It's changed things for the better, but it's really all been about disruption, one way or another. In the years following the launch of the Mac, Apple struggled to compete with the aggressively priced IBM personal computer, and by the early 1990s, it was struggling to cope against a huge array of PCs running Windows. The early 1990s saw Apple's star wane significantly, but Steve Jobs' return coincided with the return of the Mac as a major player in personal computing. Radically different designs such as the colourful iMac and iBook, followed by the launch of premium products such as the MacBook Air and Mac Pro, have made sure that the Mac brand lives on. Over the last three decades, the Mac has changed shape and size many times, from models like the Macintosh 2, the colourful iMacs and the leather-clad 20th anniversary Mac, to the iconic MacBook laptops of today. Apple's 2014 lineup of Mac computers are unrecognisable from the squat beige Mac of 1984. But what about the future? I think the future of computing is in a really exciting point at the moment as they're developing technologies left, right and centre from multiple um, touchscreen devices so you could actually interact with it with another person or devices that are actually used responding to your body motion, so sensory based technology. So even though the mouse in this display was a revolutionary addition, in fact, it might become obsolete as we use computers just with moving our bodies around without actually actively clicking. It is clear to see that in the last 30 years, the Mac and personal computing in general have changed radically. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, who founded Apple and helped create the original Mac, could only have dreamed of the technology and processing power that's available today. But the personal computer is an endangered species. Sales have been dropping, smartphones and tablets have overtaken them. And therefore the question is, in 30 years' time, will we be celebrating the 60th birthday of the Mac, or will no one even know what it is? <laughs>